What's up, guys? We're back with the rating climb 1166. And the plan is basically the same right now. Just kind of play solid, play good moves, play very carefully, don't make any big mistakes, and wait for my opponent to make those one or two mistakes that we've been seeing pretty much every game, right? I don't think those are going to go away until 12, 13, 1400 is kind of the range where, where we'll start to see less and less and less of those. But right now, I'm still expecting our opponents are going to make some significant mistakes like that. So let me just go ahead and castle. No reason to do anything fancy. Okay, we'll take that. And what I like to do against these setups is just bring both of my knights out and try to play d4 right away. Because black is spending a lot of time moving the queen, attacking the bishop, all to get me to trade my, my bishop for that knight. And so if I can use this advantage of early development and the fact that I'm already castled and black is not, that could be good for me. So I'm thinking about d4 here. Now, do I want to give up this pawn? Takes, takes, slide the rook over and start attacking the king. That's definitely an option. Or I just simply defend it. I could even push forward. And the knight can hop over here. Yeah, I think I will just play d4. And I'm understanding that I, I may lose a pawn here. But I'm basically saying that the, the pressure that I get along the e-file with my rook is going to be worth losing a pawn. Also, the fact that I can trade first and then get this move with tempo means it speeds up my attack, right? So the queen's going to have to move, then I can probably develop my bishop, and I have a knight, my bishop, my rook, all ready to go in black. I mean, look at black's pieces, right? So yeah, we're going to see this. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I do have a d5. Takes, I take the queen, he takes my queen. I guess that's just a big trade. Yeah, I'm going to go with my original plan. I think that's better. So here we go. We're going to see this. Rook to e1. Gain the tempo, temporarily down a pawn. But if we can take advantage of our lead in development, that pawn is not going to mean anything. So I'm leaning towards probably bringing my bishop out, but it's, it's going to depend where the queen goes. Because I might be able to gain another tempo on the queen with my knight, depending on, like, for example, if it goes here, maybe knight to e5 could be a good move, or even d5. Notice how important gaining those tempos is, uh, especially when you're trying to attack quickly. If you imagine if black gets, let's just say, three free moves, e6, bishop, e7, castles, black's probably going to be fine just up a pawn. So I don't want to let that happen. So how do we best do this? We could trade and try to go bishop, e3 to attack with the tempo. d5, like I mentioned, I'm not sure where the queen's going to go. We also have knight e5. So many options here. So I am going to slow down a little bit and really think through this. Because even though I have the pressure here, I don't have an obvious thing to attack. Like, obviously, I can't take that. Um, I can't, you know, really take anything here. So it's interesting. I'm thinking of knight to e5, just to put the knight in there. The only question is, after the queen moves and d6 happens, am I just wasting my time? So can I follow that up with, like, queen to f3 to attack here, maybe? Because f6 is not possible because queen h5. So I don't know how black would defend that. So it kind of depends on where is the queen going to go. So, for example, if the queen goes back here... Queen f3 looks like a very powerful move. But what if the queen goes, let's just say maybe to f6. Then what am I going to do? Then I got to take the pawn and at least get that pawn back. That looks pretty good because it kind of stops d6 chasing my knight away. So I'm liking knight e5. Where else can the queen go? e6 just doesn't look like a good place because it's lined up with the rook. Over here or here, I could probably take and maybe still play queen f3. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty powerful. So notice what I did. I identified like a spot that I could potentially target. So I think I am going to do that. I'm going to play knight to e5. And, you know, I originally had said I was going to develop my bishop, but I just don't see anything to attack right away with that. Whereas I see this queen knight idea, and it looks very difficult for black to stop. So let's see where the queen's going to go. I'm expecting, actually, I'm not, I don't know what I'm expecting. I don't know where it's going to go. Because even here on queen c7, Bishop f4 looks like a pretty nice move as well, lining up on the queen that way. Although d6 is pretty good for, for black. So what my opponent's thinking, I'm thinking too. I'm just kind of filling my brain with random ideas. Sacrificing the knight. But I want to do that because I can go check and I don't know, follow up. Eh, probably not. I think it's better to attack first. What if I push here to try to play d6? That's an interesting idea because if the pawn takes, opens up this. So I'm thinking about that. That actually could have been a good idea. In this position, d5, queen moves, and then d6. But it's too late for that, so let's keep moving forward. Okay, queen d5, interesting move. 
because it does defend what I was thinking about attacking. And also, if I were to take here, allows black the option to trade queens. C4 would gain a tempo, but then the queen's going to capture here. So let's actually analyze this. C4 takes queen to f3, going with the original plan. And if black wants to defend that, can't take the pawn because it's defended. They can't go there, so they would have to play f6, I think. Then I have queen h5, g6, and we take that. So that looks pretty good still. So I think c4 is probably the, the move that I'm leaning towards. Is there anything else? Maybe just developing, but now nah, I don't like putting the bishop there to block the rook. I don't really want to give black another pawn and potentially trade queens. So yeah, I think c4, queen f3 is the way to go here. I'm just scanning. Does black have any other ways to defend this threat? I don't really see too many, or any for that matter. Just f6 and then queen h5 I think is a good, a good move. All right, so we're going to go forward. We're going to play c4 and then queen to f3. Okay, interesting choice by our opponent to not take the pawn. Um, I don't know if that changes my plan. I still want to go queen f3. On f6, we still have queen h5 and everything looks great. Question is, could the queen defend? So maybe queen to f6 or queen to e6. Queen to e6, I'm not worried about it. I could probably just chase it away. So queen to f6 must be the move. The queen here, queen f6, what would I play? And it kind of does defend my my threat. Hmm. Interesting move. It, it's a weird move because it, it blocks the pawn. So this bishop's never coming out anytime soon unless black's going to put it over here. So what I'm thinking through now is because black has given themselves a way to defend this threat, does it make sense for me to change my plan? And maybe, I don't know, capture here and allow this trade and then just develop my pieces that way. Or maybe play d5 just to kind of gain some space. I don't know what black would do. Maybe b5 to try to put, ring the bishop here. Or maybe e6. On e6, though, I think we would simply take. Although then black takes here. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I could also play bishop f4. But then if the, this happens, queen f3 isn't quite as good. What if I just take it now? Because if the queen takes, then we can go queen f3. Uh, again with the threat although that's different because then f6 i don't have my follow-up move because on g6 i can't take so that's a pretty tricky tactic there so if i did take and this happened although probably black would just trade queens so honestly i'm not sure um what the best move is here bishop f4 but then queen takes d4 i don't i don't like that so maybe i play d5 and then bishop f4 Maybe that's the way to do it. Just taking advantage of the fact that black still hasn't developed any pieces. So yeah, I think I will do that. Basically, I'm, I'm just saying, okay, I didn't, I wasn't able to do this threat right now. I'm going to go for a different plan of just gaining some space, putting my bishop here. But those last couple of moves, like knight to e5 and c4, I basically got for free. Black didn't do anything useful, just kept moving the queen around. Now they're finally trying to play a developing move. But now I think we have bishop f4 again lining up on the queen. Also, now we have queen here, actually. Because before queen f6 was the only move to stop it, now we just take that, and black can't recapture, or they're in trouble, they lose their rook. Yeah. So that's a that's a big mistake. Tricky one to see, but that looks like a big mistake, because I don't know how... I guess there's f6 or f5. Not that those are good moves for black, but I guess they can deal with the threat. Then I have bishop f4. Yeah, and all my pieces are starting to get into the game, so... I think I will play, hmm, it's a question of which one do I want to do first. I think I will play queen f3, and I'm expecting f6 probably. And on f6, I think what I'm going to do is leave the knight there and go bishop f4. The point is that if black takes me, I'm going to take back with a fork, and I'm going to win the rook. Essentially, I lose a knight, I get a pawn and a rook. And that looks really great, and if, of course if black doesn't take me, well... I have all, literally all my pieces are ready to go. This guy can come over in one move. And still, black has not been able to find time to develop. So you can see, this all started going back to this decision by black to get greedy and take this pawn, right? Instead of playing, I don't know, just a normal, like, like d6 or e6 or something um, to, like, you know, get their pieces developed. They decided to grab this pawn. And now I'm, I'm basically just keep, you know, keep on gaining move. Okay. F6, yeah, so let's play bishop f4. Kind of a tricky move. 
But like I mentioned, after the captures, we will have the fork here. Looks good to me. Let's go. And now this is a serious threat for black. If they leave the queen there, I have knight takes g6, unleashing the discovered attack on the queen, also hitting the rook. So maybe queen b6. But again, notice one, two, three, four, five. All my pieces are ready to go. And there, there's got to be some, some way to, you know, get a great position from that. Even if I have to go back here and just attack and defend, still loving my position. So yeah, let's just say queen b6. Knight to d3 is kind of my default move. Because at that point, I don't want to just give up the knight for free because I'm not winning the, the rook anymore. So I probably would retreat. I'm just kind of analyzing what happens if I sacrifice and try to attack that. Okay, bishop g7. So here we go. Another big mistake. Black doesn't realize the danger here of the discovered attack. And now we can simply take here, unleash this. Next move, we take the rook. And now all of a sudden, Black's position falls apart. So Black was playing relatively okay up until this point. First big mistake here. They, they made some questionable decisions, not really tactical errors, but like just kind of principled mistakes of like, it probably you shouldn't grab that pawn. You probably should focus on getting your pieces out quicker, you know, things like that. But here we can see Black, Black is now in trouble. Probably have to go queen b6. Now we can grab the rook. Oh, and I could have actually taken that. I wonder if that was a better move. Check and taking the bishop. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. I just noticed it a little bit late. Okay, so d6 to attack this is an idea. Also, just the immediate queen check and grab the pawn looks pretty good. I think I'll just do that. This looks very, very annoying for black because it looks like the bishop is going to be trapped after the after that. And yeah, black's position is falling apart. And notice, these guys never got a chance to play. Black never even used those pieces. Okay, let's take this. Let's just verify no more no mistakes, no uh, obvious moves that I'm missing. I don't think so. Bishop is trapped. That's why I mentioned earlier f6 just didn't feel like a good move, right? Like whenever you fiend kettle your bishop and then you have to block it with a pawn, it's, it's just not usually what you want to do, right? Okay, so he plays d6, trying to get this guy out, but it's just a little bit too late. Let's go ahead and get the free piece. And we're still hunting the king. Bishop can't move right now. We have the pin. Uh, looks like my rook can come in. I just saw that. Let's take here on e7. And, wow, what do we want to do here? So many good moves. We could go for the double pin here, the, the battery. Oh, bishop d7. Well, that just gives me the rook, so we'll take that. I was also thinking about taking here and putting more pressure on here. I was like, okay, well, let's watch out for the back rank checkmate. That would be a sad way to lose the game. I'm also just checking if is there like a checkmate for me here. Don't quite see one. I could take here, but I don't really have a great follow-up. I could take here, but again, what's my follow-up? So probably the simplest thing to do is just slide the rook over. These guys are now defended. I don't have to worry about my back rank anymore. No more back rank checkmates. And we're going to have checkmate in a few moves. Okay, so he's, he, he is attacking here, but it's defended. Um... So this is pinned. Probably the easiest thing is to maybe just attack the bishop with my queen. Although then there might be a little tactic here. Yeah, which would still be fine for me. But uh, what's the easiest way to do this? Oh, actually, I might see a checkmate here. Hold on. Yeah, I, I see checkmate. So we sacrifice here and then queen b8 is actually just checkmate. I guess the king could run over here. No, it doesn't see it. Okay. So let's go back and talk about this game. Very briefly, but we really saw, you know, a good example of how sacrificing that pawn really worked out nicely for us. Okay, so let's go ahead. So, you know, kind of what I was expecting here was black to just capture and then I was going to take with my queen and they were going to continue developing like e6 and get the bishop out and castle or whatever. But like I mentioned, they could take this, which, okay, according to Stockfish, is the best move. But now you have to play this game where you're, you're just down so much time. And that's really the big, the big thing here. And let's see, 95 was the best move. C4 was the best move, gaining tempos and attacking that queen. D5 was the best move. So, and then G6. Yeah, I don't think black really had a great move here. Best move was queen F6. Yeah, that's kind of a stockfish type of move. Very hard to play as a, as a person here. Queen F3. Yeah, so I mean... Not really much to see there. Black's position fell apart. Stockfish said here they could have played queen to d5, which maybe was a little bit better. 
But even that, those just look so weird to me. Like, I'm probably just going to play rookie five. And what, what does Stockfish say? Queen d6? And I'm just going to take this. I mean, game goes on. Stockfish says this is better for black because you play b6 and then you get your bishop out. But okay, whatever. So yeah, just just takeaways. Don't be afraid to sacrifice a pawn in the, you know, early on. If you can get quick attack, um, quick tempo gains. So like moving your pieces with tempo while you attack stuff. And also, if you have a lead in development and you can attack the king, right? That I saw that all of those things were going to happen if I gave up that pawn. So that's why I decided to do it, right? Whereas, you know, I think a lot of people maybe in this position would play a move like d3, which, okay, it's not a bad move, but it's very passive. And you're not going to get those attacking positions and, and be able to win some nice games if you're always just playing moves like this. You want to be looking for those you know, aggressive options, right? Like we saw in this game. So anyway, hope that helps. Let's play one more quick game for this video. All right, we're 1174, so we're approaching 1200. Okay, D4, let's just play D5. We'll keep it simple. Queen's Gambit. Um, should I accept the Gambit or decline the Gambit? Or play a Counter Gambit? Let's play a Counter Gambit. Albin Counter Gambit. It's tricky. We'll see if our opponent has experience with this one. They do take it. Let me see if I can actually remember. I think what we do is push forward. And there are some very clever tricks here with bishop to b4 that white has to watch out for. Let's see what, they, what they're going to do. Yeah, knight to f3. Okay. I'm trying to remember. What, what's, the, what's the move here? So we want to play bishop check. But I think it's not until they play e3 because we want to be able to take here. So what's the move that I'm supposed to play right now? That's what I'm not sure about. I feel like it's either knight c6 or bishop g4. Must be knight c6. I have to defend my pawn, right? Yeah, it's got to be knight c6 because the pawn's under attack. So what I'm doing right now, guys, is I'm not exactly thinking about playing chess on this position. I'm more trying to remember some of the lines that I've learned, which is kind of a different skill set. Honestly, it's not one that I'm super good at. Like some super grandmasters, like uh, Hikaru, for example, Levy's actually pretty good at this. They have a lot of opening knowledge in their brains. And you can see when they play, they're like, oh yeah, this is the line, let me play this. And oh yeah, this was the best move here. That's kind of a different skill set, right? And that, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to remember what the trap is. There's a trap where you play bishop before check. I think after e3, and then after like here we take, and it's it's very, very tricky for white. But that's totally different than if I'm just playing chess and I'm just like, well, let me just see what's a good move in this position, right? Okay, bishop f4, interesting move. So, Maybe it's a good move um, because now bishop b4, he's just going to play knight to d2. And I don't really have an amazing follow-up. I mean, I can still go for that. But I think what I might do instead is play bishop to f5. I'm trying to think if I can bring my knight in like this. Could be pretty annoying. But yeah, let's do that. Also go bishop g... No, I want to go bishop f5 for two reasons. Number one, it gives me the option of potentially playing d3. And number two, I may consider stuff like this. Okay, knight here. So now, I mean, now the trap is not happening anymore. I'm just basically playing chess at this point. So um, bishop to b4 looks like a logical move. Develops, pins the knight. Knight to b4 threatens this. On queen to a4 check, I'm not really worried. I can block with the pawn. My knight's defended. The question is, though, is that an easy threat to deal with? Like rook c1. I can't take that because I get forked. So it's kind of an easy, although I have d3 though. And d3 is a very annoying move because then I can play knight c2 with the support of the pawn. And if captures, my knight's jumping in. And if the bishop has to take, then my bishop cuts off the king. That's super powerful because then why can't castle? So I am leaning towards knight to b4 now. This is defended. What would white play? That's kind of the question. Like, Does white have any other moves that I'm missing here? I don't think so. I think you got to play rook c1 to stop that. How? I mean, how else do you stop it? I don't see it. But after rook c1, d3. Now, of course, white can throw in this move. But like I mentioned, I'm going to play c6. I don't really think that changes too much. And after d3, looks... There is e4. But still, that's, that's a super annoying pawn. Yeah. So I think I like the way this is looking. Let's move forward with the plan of knight to b4. Now you can see why I went bishop f5, because this is very serious threat here. And d3, I mean, d3 is going to be a killer move here. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's why 
a lot of people play e3 is to get rid of this annoying pawn earlier which opens up the trap okay so it does go for queen here like i mentioned i think i'm just gonna go with c6 other option would be like queen d7 but why i don't think i want to allow a queen trade right now i want to keep my queen it's defending the pawn helping support here c6 totally shuts down that diagonal and looks like a fine move now the only thing is if my knight were to like get trapped because i can't go back here but i do have a6 and really i'm i'm looking to move forward on one of these squares right so i think white now has to play rook c1 and then like i mentioned d3 is going to set up knight to c2 or just hopping in here with the knight yep so it looks like d3 is the move i'm just scanning are there any other moves that may you know might make any kind of sense i don't think so i think we have to move forward with the plan now on e4 i could simply retreat my bishop i could go check takes 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 that's oh i would get a queen i could do that yeah so i see a couple of options that look pretty good let's move forward with d3 and you know here's an example where i'm not really developing over here but i'm making some very serious threats and sometimes this comes with practice right you, you just kind of get this feeling of like okay is it okay to not develop and make these serious threats and because they are so powerful and they require white to deal with them in, in awkward ways i think it is all right in this situation like like for what i'm talking about it's like why did i play d3 instead of like developing a piece because i'm always talking about develop as quick as you can but this just looks like such a powerful threat because now i have this knight c2 idea and once i go check here if the king has to move, that's a permanent weakness on the king. He no longer can castle. If the rook takes, I take, I can't lose my, I won't lose my bishop because I have a threat of getting a queen. So white would have to deal with that first. Take, so they'd probably have to just take with the queen. And then I'd have to move my bishop. Which, honestly, I don't know if that's as good as just moving my bishop now. So I think just maybe going back here, e6, g4, all of these look like viable options. Here puts pressure here, defends here, blockades the pawn. Here I keep the pressure here, and here I get some pressure along this diagonal, all of which could be useful. So it's a, it's kind of a tough decision. Basically, what I'm saying is, after I move this, I don't know how White's going to develop this because you can't take, you can't go there, which means you can't castle. And I'm going to have this move just kind of constantly there if I need it. So it's very tricky for White to figure out what to do next. My plan of development is probably going to be Bishop C5 and Knight E7. So I'm leaning towards one of these two moves. I don't see the, the benefit of going here because it's already supported and I might actually get attacked by some pawns. So I'm narrowing it down to one of these two. Very similar in my mind. I don't see like too much difference. Like maybe this could be useful because the knight is going to be stuck guarding it. Um, yeah, so I don't know that it really matters. I'll just go bishop g6 and plan on playing bishop here and probably knight to e7 to finish my development also might just throw in knight knight to c2 here and you know maybe i should have done it right away I'm, I'm just trying to i guess the reason i didn't do it is because giving white you know what do they have three six three six seven they'd have they'd have um a knight and two pawns for a rook which is not a terrible trade actually and it kind of frees up their position at that point then the bishop can go to d3 they simply castle the queen's going to be defending right it just makes it easy for white to play the next couple of moves whereas by going here this is going to be a difficult move for white yeah now we see g3 so I, I wanted to see how they were going to react so they created some weaknesses along the light squares by doing this and now maybe i will go for that also could still just delay it by a move play bishop c5 but have anything else white's probably going to play bishop g2 for sure and I don't really no. I guess what I could do is go here now and then put my bishop on b4 to pin this, which threatens this. It's not a bad idea. Okay, so maybe I will do that. I'm, I'm using a lot of time here and I want to kind of move the game along. Um, so let's go ahead and go for knight to c2. White, white has to take this. I think king d1 would be a terrible move. So I'm expecting this. Oh. Okay, well, there we go. We talked about those mistakes. That's not good because now the king is, is permanently stuck in the center, right? It was going to be able to castle. And white was going to have a decent game, I think, if they just were willing to give up the exchange. In fact, they didn't. I'm very happy to see that. Okay, so let's just keep developing. 
I don't need to do anything fancy now. Um, there is this idea, which, hmm, yeah, it's actually not a bad idea from, from white to sacrifice here and then take with the queen. I think I would just retreat and try to keep attacking the king. Okay, that should be fine. Let's go ahead and play bishop c5. I really want to get my knight and castle uh, for two reasons, to get my king to safety. And Okay, and they are going to go for it. All right, so good little tactic spotted there by our opponent. I'm going to take this. I am going to lose my knight. Oh, you know what? I do have bishop e4. I just saw that one. Question is, though, do I want to allow the queen trade? So three, six, seven, eight. So I'm down two pawns right now. I can get one back. The knight can't move. If the queen takes, I take here. It's still a good position for me because of white's awkward king placement. Is it good enough? Or would I rather maybe even just castle so that my rook can come in? Or keep the queens on the board and come back here? Because of the time situation, I'm going to go ahead and take with the bishop, try to simplify a little bit. And I still think it's going to be a lot of compensation for one pawn. Uh, so you're, if he takes, you're going to see what I'm talking about. I'm down a pawn, but white's king is very, very awkward. And I'm going to be able to castle, line up my rook, Bishop is kind of slicing across, and it's tough for white to figure out what to do, right? So yeah, we're going to see this here. And I think this is going to illustrate, even without queens on the board, you can still take advantage of a misplaced king. Okay, so he's attacking my bishop. Looks like a free pawn. I think I will go ahead and grab it. And still planning on castling to bring the rook over. And I'm keeping an eye on the time. You know, a minute and a half, it's that point where I have to just play quickly. I can't... Uh, overanalyze or I will probably lose on time and so with that in mind we're going to just try to play as quickly as we can let's go ahead and castle that's what I wanted to do anyway so that was an easy one defends my bishop lines up on the king and now white has to be very careful right because this bishop can move wherever it wants right now to get the check yeah that's a good move that's a good move all right so let's see how can we attack something else um I think what I'm going to do is go here Pins the knight, attacks the knight, also sets up rook to d3. Looks like a pretty powerful move. And I don't know what white's going to do about that. Okay, so they don't deal with either of those threats. So if I go check, king is going to either have to go here or here. That looks really good. I think this is another one of those significant mistakes that I'm, that I'm talking about. Because the easy option for me is just take the knight with my rook and defend. I may actually even have something better. So I'm going to be looking very carefully, especially if the king goes here. If it goes here, oh, still looking if I have like some, yeah, maybe not because I can hide behind the knight. Okay, so I think the simplest thing is to just snag the bishop, although there is knight to d2. It's going to get a little bit tricky. It is getting a little bit tricky. Yeah. So let's take this. Knight to d2, but I have c5, and it almost looks like the king is getting checkmated. Almost looks like the king is getting checkmated. Okay, he goes for rook d1. So let's just bring out a piece. I don't have too much time to, to waste here, so I want to go ahead and develop that. Get my rook over. Now that I'm up a piece, if I can find a way to simplify and trade everything off, like, ah, maybe I should have played bishop c2. That might have been my, my way to trade everything. Uh, but if I can see something like that, I'm probably going to do it. 45 seconds, got to play pretty quick. Now, I'm, I'm pretty good at bullet, so I'm not super concerned. But for a lot of people, you would, you know, you'd have to really start moving here. So I'm going to try to checkmate the king because I'm noticing it doesn't have a lot of places to go. It does not have a lot of places to go. Check here. We can go b6, but it's not checkmate. Yeah, so I'm still going to go b6 and I'm, I'm going to probably going to give up my rook for this bishop. And then just stick my bishop on d4 and then try to checkmate the king. I think that's the plan. Because we forced it back here now. Unfortunately, that doesn't checkmate it. Doesn't checkmate it. Yeah, so we're going to take this. We're going to put the bishop here. And I'm still going to look for checkmate. So I'm trying to think, how can I use my knight or my rook to do that? What a crazy, what a crazy position. Um, yeah, I don't actually know. King c7 check. The rook would checkmate, but what I'm worried about is that the king just runs here. I would need my knight to get there. This is wild. Got it. There's got to be a checkmate. I just don't see it. How do I get my knight there? I have to go to c6, but I need the c6 square for my bishop. If I go here, knight c6, ah, maybe like... 
Maybe like that. Should we, should we go for it? I'm gonna go for it, guys. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna take this. And I'm gonna go here. And I think I see a way to checkmate the king. Although if white is smart, they'll probably just sacrifice this. If they don't. I want to force the king to take this. Yeah, I, I think I see the checkmate. I think I see it. What a crazy, crazy position. Now white could take here if they want. But they still get checkmated. So that doesn't really help them. Oof. And if they go here, yeah, we have it. We have it. All right. They can't stop the rook checkmate now. Good fight by our opponent. Very good fight. And I, I was doing a lot of talking in the beginning, so I kind of put myself in a tough spot. But they played very, very well. Defended that tricky position very well. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed by our opponents play this game overall. I mean, they, they did make some mistakes, but they, they were finding some, some nice moves. Okay, good game. And let's go take a look at that. That was fascinating position. Um... It'll be interesting to see what Stockfish says. Okay, we both had some brilliant moves. All right, how about that? Let's take a look. Okay, so Bishop F4 is a good move. Actually, one of the top engine moves. So our opponent played the opening well. And I think the trap that I was going to show you guys was E3. We go Bishop B4 check. And if they play Bishop D2, we can take here. And there's a lot of ways for, black to, for white to mess this up. Like if they try to take here, this is kind of the cool one. We take and then... Oh, the other one is when they don't develop the knight. You you actually take there with the knight. This one's still good for us, not as good. Okay, it would just go something like this. And it's a slightly better position for black. Okay, that's not the main trap. Yeah, I, I forgot. You want the knight to be back there so that when you take and they move the king, you can actually take the knight under promote with a check. Anyway, let's get back to the game. So bishop f4, good move by our opponent. And knight to b4 wasn't the best approach. Because why? Rook c1, d3. So interesting that Stockfish is saying to just capture this, because I was really going to be happy with this. Basically, if, if I'm slicing across the king like this, I'm pretty happy. Stockfish is basically saying it's fine for white, and that white has time to do some other stuff. And it has to do with the fact that I'm undeveloped. White's going to start attacking. And then what was the plan here? Uh, rook to c3 to force the bishop to leave and then castles interesting so that's a good example of i was a little bit off in my judgment right and a, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that i didn't develop my pieces quickly enough all i was doing was this sort of two-piece attack with my knight and bishop and, and maybe my pawn right so interesting okay so i learned something there all right let's go ahead and move on brilliant move by our opponent yeah they did see that one so nice tactic that they spotted Here's a good example of how, like, 1,100 rated players, they will find some nice tactics from time to time. Like this one. That was a nice tactic, right? Give up the bishop, then you take here. But a few moves later, we saw right here, no, here, they just blundered this one, right? The fact that I can throw in the check and take the knight. So, you know, they find some, but then they miss some. Okay, so here we go. Oh, blunder. Really? I was supposed to go c5 check. And if the king just moves somewhere, like over here, then take it. So basically, Stockfish is just saying I needed to throw in that move. Anyway, let's keep going. I want to get to the checkmate. Okay. So, best move, rook takes f4. And then bishop d4, king c7. King c7. Wait a, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. King C7, why is King C7 the best move? A6, oh. This was the way that you do it. Basically, guys, here is what, I, that's what I missed. Super good idea, okay. So here's the thing. When you get this position, oh, sorry, well, this position, it's almost checkmate, but you need your rook to be able to come over here and, and help out. And then it's easy. It's a, it's a very... Uh, you know, powerful mating net here. The bishop is controlling with the king's help. The king can't get out. It's an easy checkmate. The problem is white never has to take the pawn. Like I can go check. They just go back. I can go check. They just go back. There's nothing that really happens. So what Stockfish is saying here 
is you play a6 so that when you play b6 next move, white has to take your pawn. And it's out of the way, and the rook can deliver the checkmate. That's what I missed in the game. So, very good idea. I was just thinking about checks. I didn't have a lot of time. And by allowing that pawn, my, my own pawn was why I couldn't win the game, right? The other point about this that I was thinking through is like, if I tried to push it here, well, then the white king actually just runs away. And I'm in trouble. I'm going to lose. Very, very fascinating. So, going back to the actual game, I messed up. Didn't go for a6 which would have been a better move. Although I, I did need to give this up first. Yes, because I'm going to lose the rook here anyway. So give it up for this. And then I can put my bishop on d4 or just go for that checkmate. Yeah, that would have been nice. But still had a pretty nice position. We had, you know, if you if you look at this, we have two bishops for a rook, which is generally better than the rook. So even, even without the checkmate on the king, I, I would have a better position. But I also have the king kind of in a mating net here. Okay, should be seven takes. So yeah, my idea only worked because my opponent didn't see the way out. They needed to sacrifice right here and then just play b4 and, and they're fine. Okay, but they didn't see that. Tricky to see. And now I do have checkmate. And yeah, exactly like I showed. Okay, and what I was going to show you guys in the game is if the king tried to run this way, we had rook to a8 and then rook to a5 was checkmate. So lots of little mating nets and mating patterns there with with pieces without the queen. Super interesting game. And my opponent did give me a run for my money there as I was so low on time. Wow. I hope you guys enjoyed that game and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.